All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Smith. I'm the Wellness Program Administrator here with Employee Development and Wellness Services at Georgia State University. By trade, I am a registered dietitian, and I'm really excited to be cooking with you today. But before we get started, I do wanna go over a couple quick things about the WebEx platform. Um, so just a couple things here. We are gonna be making use of the chat feature here in WebEx. So if you've got questions, comments, ideas, anything like that, we'd love to hear it. So throughout today's presentation, if you wanna type that in the chat, we'll be sure to address any comments or questions people might have at the end of today's session. We are gonna be recording this so that we can send it out to you to watch again later or share with a colleague who may not have been able to attend today. Additionally, when we send out that recording, we'll be including a copy of today's recipe along with the nutrition information and any other helpful tips that we can give you to make your cooking experience a little bit better. So today we are going to be working with a recipe that is for a spicy bok choy and tofu hot pot. So the idea here is we are essentially making a little bit of a spicy uh, broth soup. Um, it's gonna have tofu, it's gonna have bok choy, mushrooms, and then a good flavorful sauce in there uh, to kind of combine it all together. Nutritionally, this is a pretty light dish. The calories are fairly low for a serving. It makes about six servings. Um, it's only gonna be about 200 to 250 calories. So definitely a lighter dish. It does have a good source of protein coming from some of the ingredients we'll talk about. And we'll walk through some other modifications you can make to make it fit your diet a little bit better. In terms of equipment today, we're gonna to need just a couple key things. You're gonna want a cutting board and a cutting or a cutting surface of some sort and a knife. We're gonna be making use of just a large pot. You do want a fairly sizable one because when we add in all the broth, we're gonna make use of all that room. And then you'll just need a stove top to heat it up in. Now, because we're working with tofu, I have done one step ahead of time to prepare us for this. And that is I've pressed the tofu and let me show you what my pressing setup looks like. It's really nothing too fancy. You don't need a tofu press or any device for it. Um, essentially, tofu, if you're unfamiliar with it, is made from soybeans. It kind of is like a white sponge whenever you get it. It's just in some liquid. But we want to get that liquid out so that it can soak up the flavor of the dish we're making. So let me show you what I've got here. This is a cutting board with some paper towels, the tofu, some more paper towels, and then a heavy object, just some cans of beans on top to weigh it down. So typically before you use tofu, you'll want to press it in order to get some of that excess liquid out of there. So I've pressed this for about 20 to 30 minutes. That's usually a good amount of time to do it. So removing the layer of a dish towel and then just a paper towel that's in direct contact with the tofu. And I'll show you what this all looks like. And if you're new to tofu, we'll be sure to include in the recipe today uh, just some instructions for how to handle it. I know it can be a little intimidating for first time users. So whenever you get the tofu, it's gonna come in one brick. I typically cut it into three smaller pieces like that. That makes the pressing work a little bit better because the smaller pieces can get more of that liquid out. So this has been pre-pressed. Again, before you cook, you'll wanna set this up for at least 15 minutes, uh, but the longer you do it, the more liquid you'll get out and the more flavorful the tofu will become. So I'm actually just gonna set this to the side for now because we don't immediately need this. We're gonna bring it back up a little bit later. So to get started, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna heat some oil in our pot. I've got two tablespoons of canola oil here. You can use any vegetable oil you prefer. Canola is a pretty neutral flavored oil. If you wanna use all of you can, it is gonna contribute some flavors to this dish that may or may not mix well with the other things. You can kind of experiment and find out, but I would recommend more of a neutral flavored oil. So that's why I'm using two tablespoons of canola oil. So we'll go ahead and put that in and we're just gonna heat that over a medium heat. Okay, so we got the burner going there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start getting some aromatics in there. Uh, your kitchen's gonna start to smell good and these are gonna add a lot of flavors to our total dish. So I'm using half a teaspoon of just ground dried ginger. If you wanna use fresh ginger, you absolutely can. If you're using fresh, I'd recommend using two tablespoons of it. Um, the dried stuff, we typically use less of a fresh version of the herb. So this is half a teaspoon of dried ginger. And then similarly with garlic, I'm using minced garlic for the convenience. If you wanna use fresh cloves, you can. Uh, we're gonna be using one tablespoon um, of minced garlic, which is quite a bit, uh, but we are, or sorry, not a tablespoon, I apologize. Um, we're gonna be using 
half a tablespoon of minced garlic in order to give it a good garlicky flavor. If you're using fresh garlic, you'll just use cloves and you can kind of decide how much you want. If you like garlic, this is always a good opportunity to put more in. I tend to go pretty heavy with garlic in my dishes because it's a low sodium way to add a lot of good flavor to things. So go ahead and give this a quick stir. We're just gonna mix the garlic and the ginger around in the oil. And we don't need to keep this for very long, really just about 60 seconds before we'll add in our next ingredient. So our next ingredient is shiitake mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms, I know, are a little divisive when it comes to cooking. Some people love mushrooms. They love them on pizza. They'll have them in soups. They may have them on salads. Other people cannot stand mushrooms. Totally get it if that's where you're at. There are lots of substitutions we can use here. If you don't want to do something like mushrooms, just pick another vegetable and we can kind of plug it in at this step. This is two cups of chopped shiitake mushrooms. We do want them to be chopped somewhat finely. If your pieces, when you buy them, you may buy them pre-sliced. If you have big, long slices in there, they're not gonna cook as evenly, and they may be a little tough and chewy whenever you have the soup later on. Uh, we don't want that, so smaller pieces will cook faster and more evenly, so I do recommend chopping them up. Again, this is two cups of chopped shiitake mushroom. If you wanna replace this with another vegetable, pick a slightly heartier vegetable for this step. What I mean by that is something like uh, a, a leafy green, like the bok choy we have here. We're gonna add that later because it's going to cook pretty fast. It doesn't have a lot of strength to it. Uh, but something like mushrooms take a little longer to cook. Broccoli, I think would be a great substitution here. Those are a little tougher, so we can cook them a little longer. So if you don't wanna do mushrooms, maybe doing two cups of chopped broccoli might be a great substitution for you. So we'll go ahead and add in the two cups of the chopped shiitake mushroom. And again, I'm just gonna mix it around, get it in contact with that garlic, with that ginger, pick up some of that oil. Now we are maintaining a just a medium heat here. Right now we're in a pot and we're basically just kind of stir frying just in a, a weird container because we don't have a lot of liquid, we don't have any vegetable broth yet. So we're just trying to cook the mushrooms a little bit ahead of time because they do take longer to cook. So we're giving them a head start. The next ingredient we're going to be using uh, is going to be the bok choy in terms of our vegetables. Oh, and I apologize for the mushrooms. When you put those in, we're going to let those cook for about two to three minutes. What we're looking for is for them to begin to soften. They don't need to be fully cooked. We're going to give them more time. But at a two to three minute mark, you should see them become a little more tender. And then we can move on to the next step. In the meantime, let's get our bok choy ready. In total, you're going to need six cups of chopped bok choy. Now, if you get baby bok choy, you may have to buy several of them. If you have a larger bok choy variant, you may not need to buy quite as many. I've gone ahead and pre-chopped some of it just to save us some time today. Uh, if you're not familiar with bok choy, it's in a lot of Asian and Chinese-based dishes. It has a nice flavor to it, good way to get in some green nutrition. We're always looking for that. So in order to chop these, what I like to do is typically cut them in half first to give us a flat area we can press against the cutting board, it makes the cutting process a little easier. So typically you can kind of position it how you need to, find a good middle part here at the base and just cut through it. It should come apart pretty easily. There's not a lot of resistance. And now with these flat surfaces, we can keep them on the cutting board and they won't rock as much. Now the whole bok choy is edible, but I tend to cut off the bottom part where it's a little paler and whiter. Um, I favor those green leafy bits at the top and these parts at the bottom can be a little stiff and a little hard and may not cook as evenly. So I do recommend chopping off a small amount of that at the bottom just so that when you put this through and cook it, it'll all be cooked nicely. So in order to chop these, go ahead and turn it. And I like to actually start, sorry, with the rougher end here, so the bottom of it. And you're just going to do some thin slices through it. Thinner slices are going to be better so that it'll cook more evenly and you will just cut right through it. If you haven't had bok choy before, uh, it's pretty comparable to a lot of other greens and a lot of vegetables that look similar to it. So it's an easy new food for you to try. Uh, nothing too strong in terms of the flavor. So we'll set that to the side and do the same thing with this other half here, grouping it together, forming that kind of claw grip to protect our fingertips, and then doing some thin slices through it. Now, as you slice through this, particularly at the base of it, if you notice that there are big pieces, you may wanna go back and run your knife through in the other direction just to chop those up. Near the top, when you're at the leafy bits, you don't have to worry about that. Those tender leaves are going to cook very quickly and wilt nicely. 
But those pieces at the bottom that have that kind of thicker, more water content, again, you can just run the knife through like this and get them into slightly smaller pieces. So let's set this aside just now for a moment. Again, we wanted six cups total of bok choy and I have pre-chopped some of them already. The mushrooms are in here cooking. We want to now add some liquid to this to make it into more of that soup that we're ultimately aiming for. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add low sodium vegetable broth. We do wanna make use of the low sodium broth because we're using soy sauce and vegetable broth, which together, if we do the full sodium variants, can be pretty high in salt. We wanna to try to tone that down a little bit so you can look for the low, veg or the low sodium option at your grocery store. We're gonna add four cups of vegetable broth, which most of the vegetable broth cartons you'll see will have exactly four cups in them. So we're just gonna add in this entire thing. Again, we're keeping it heart healthy through the low sodium vegetable broth. And then when it comes to the soy sauce that we're going to use, we're actually gonna be using a light or a low sodium soy sauce as well. You can find these next to the regular soy sauce at your grocery store. Even the low sodium or the lower sodium soy sauce is still fairly salty. So you're still gonna get a lot of flavor, uh, but we're keeping things a little healthier by making that swap. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of the low sodium soy sauce here. And this will really add a lot of flavor to the dish. Soy sauce is kind of a, a centerpiece of a lot of Asian inspired dishes. It brings in a lot of different flavors there. We're going to also add one tablespoon of brown sugar. So we've added the salt. We're gonna give a little bit of sweetness to it with the tablespoon of brown sugar. So we'll dump that in. And then the last ingredient, this is a chili garlic sauce. Uh, if you've heard of sriracha before, that uh, is a nice spicy sauce. This is similar to that. Sriracha even has a brand or a variant of it, but this one has a little bit of garlic in it to give it more flavor. The amount of this that you choose to do is entirely up to you. I'm going to be using two tablespoons. That will give it, uh, over the course of six servings, it'll give it a, a mild kick, nothing too crazy. But if you want to spice it up, you can certainly add in more of this. I know a lot of my friends love sriracha and chili-based sauces, and they go really heavy on it, so that's up to you. I'm going to recommend two tablespoons for a mild kick, just enough to keep it interesting, uh, but nothing that's going to burn our mouth or anything. So once you've added in those liquid ingredients, the four cups of low-sodium vegetable broth, the quarter cup of low-sodium soy sauce, two tablespoons of chili garlic sauce, and you can find this in the Asian food section of your grocery store, and then one tablespoon of brown sugar, we're gonna give it a gentle stir, just kind of mix some of those ingredients in. And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is put a lid over our pot and then bring it to a boil. So go ahead and crank that heat up. It'll get to a rapid boil, depending on the speed of your stove. If you've got a gas stove, it'll probably go pretty quickly. If it's an electric, it may take a little bit longer, but you'll know, you'll see those bubbles coming up and then we'll know that we're good to add in our next ingredients. So I'm gonna actually move the bok choy in here with the rest of it. We're gonna put all that in. So the bok choy is where a lot of the vegetable nutrition is coming from in this dish. We can see six cups is quite a lot. It is going to cook down though, once we add it into the soup there, all that heat will make it wilt and reduce in volume. So even though it looks like a really, really large amount, it will condense down quite a bit, kind of like when you cook spinach and it tends to shrink. So let's bring our tofu back out into the picture. So we've pressed these, we've got these three pieces. All I'm gonna do is cut it into small cubes. The small cubes will make just for nicer bites whenever you are enjoying the dish at the very end. I cut one way, turn 90 degrees, and then cut perpendicular just to get that nice cube shape. And the, the cube size is of course up to you as well. Um, but if you make them too big, it may kind of throw off the balance of the soup it's just kind of up to you if you've ever made like a meat-based soup or a stew, you can kind of decide, do you want those really big pieces of flavor uh, that are coming up every now and then, or would you rather them be smaller and a little bit in each bite? I'm going for the little bit in each bite approach here today. So nutritionally, tofu is going to be our protein powerhouse for this dish. Most of the protein in it is coming from here. Soybeans are an excellent source of protein. So tofu is a great way if you're trying to do more of a plant-based option to add that in. It's very affordable, a good way to get in protein as well. So that's why we like to work with it. And it goes great with a lot of these Asian dishes. So 
again, we are waiting on this to boil. Once you see all those bubbles coming up at the top, we will go ahead and add in both the tofu and the bok choy. Once we've added those in, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it to a simmer. So we should see some light bubbles coming up to the top, but not that rapid boil that we'll be experiencing here at the beginning. So we'll get all those in. And the way that the tofu works, I mentioned it's like a sponge. You can see it's kind of squishy. Um, it's going to get in there. It's going to soak up that soy sauce. It's going to soak up that chili garlic sauce and become very, very flavorful, uh, kind of like a sponge soaking up all those different flavors. So by itself, this really doesn't taste like much of anything. That's why whenever we use tofu, we want to have some really tasty sauce, a broth or something that can contribute that flavor and make it nice and tasty when we bite into it. So we've got a great boil going over here. I'm going to carefully open this. Uh, with the opening away from me so some of that steam can rise up because you can burn yourself on that steam. And let's go ahead and add in the tofu here. Okay. And then next we will add in our bok choy. And then let's just give this a quick stir and reduce that heat. Again, we want it to simmer, so a little bit of bubbles coming up to the top, but we don't need it going too strong. The bok choy is a lot more sensitive, uh, and we don't want to burn it or overcook it. So mixing it around so that everything can kind of pick up the flavor. Those mushrooms that have been at the bottom, we want to bring those closer to the top now and mix them in with everything else. And then we'll go ahead and put the lid back on that and let it simmer for about two to three minutes again. What we're looking for is this bok choy leaves should start to wilt just a little bit. They may become a slightly darker green. Um, you'll see that they're not going to be quite as firm, and that'll be a good indication that it's time to move on to our next ingredient. And the final ingredient in today's recipe is going to be noodles. Now, you can choose what type of noodles you want to do. If you go to the, uh, the international section or the Asian section of your grocery store, you will probably find quite a few different noodle variants. What we are looking for though, are noodles that will cook fairly quickly. Uh, and the reason I say that is we're adding them at the end of this dish to actually cook with everything else. So this is a one pot recipe, which I love, keeps the dishes a little bit simpler uh, and just kind of streamlines everything. What I have here are thin egg noodles. These are just the blue dragon variety. These are great because they only take about three to four minutes to cook when we add them to this. So looking for noodles that will cook in about a three to four minute time span is going to be ideal. If you're at the grocery store, you'll see a lot of different kinds. Some will take longer to cook, more like traditional pasta would, and may take uh, eight to 10 minutes. That's gonna be a little long for this to hold up to that heat. Um, so the bok choy really won't last that long. So look for some of those faster cooking ones in that three to four minute ballpark. If you don't wanna buy noodles, or you're not really wanting to use them specifically, you can make use of like linguine or just a pasta. Uh, we won't have any Italian flavors in here, but the base adding some starch, some carbohydrate is pretty similar. If you wanna just make use of some pasta you already have in your pantry, what I would recommend doing is cooking the pasta in a separate pot. And once it's done cooking, adding it in at the very, very end, um, just cause you'll overcook the rest of the vegetables if you have those all in one pot. But if you have the quick cooking noodles like this, you'll be golden. So these are interesting. They come in little nests are what they, they're called. They kind of look like a little bird's nest. And it's just a little cluster of the noodles. These are nice because you have these pre-portioned little amounts rather than having to like measure out the spaghetti or things like that. So I think that that's kind of fun. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna use, whether you're using pasta, noodles, anything like that, you're gonna use six ounces of the dry noodles or the dry pastas. So one of these is two ounces. So for me, I'm gonna make use of three of these little nests. Nutritionally, these are very, very similar to uh, any kind of pasta. In fact, they're just wheat-based noodles. So the ingredients are mostly the same as well. So I'm looking over here. This has been going at a nice simmer with some gentle bubbles again. I'm gonna carefully lift the lid off. And for our last step here, we're going to add in these noodles. And what you'll do is you'll want to press those noodles down into the broth. You want to submerge it because we want them to be in contact with that liquid so they'll cook and they'll get warm. You can kind of stir things around a little bit, dunk them in there. 
as they come into contact with the heat and the liquid, the noodles will also start to break up out of those little nest formations that they had. So if you want to, you can apply some pressure with the spoon and break them up a little bit. As they cook though, they're gonna naturally do that as they soften. So I'm pushing them down in there, just giving it a gentle stir, making sure that they are not at the very top. And then we're gonna put the lid back on and bring it to a boil one more time and cook for those three to four minutes that the package recommends. And this is gonna be what will complete the dish. So while we are waiting on that to cook all the way through and boil for about three minutes, let's talk again about all the nutrition and how it's coming together here. So typically whenever you have a soup uh, or even just an Asian dish in general, they tend to be very, very high in sodium based on some of the ingredients that go into them. Soups tend to have the broth and the salt uh, and having a lot of sodium in the diet can contribute to some blood pressure issues, which we definitely want to try to avoid. So again, recapping, we made use of a low sodium vegetable broth to decrease the amount of sodium from the broth that we're adding. For the soy sauce, we still wanna have that Asian inspired flavor, but by using the light soy sauce, we reduce the sodium there. We added flavor through some non-salt ways by using the garlic, the ginger, we had a little bit of sugar from the brown sugar, but not too much, just a little bit of sweetness there. And then we used the chili garlic sauce to add a little bit more flavor as well. The noodles that I got don't have any sodium in them, so that's keeping that all low, which really comes together for a nice, pretty heart healthy package in terms of that. Nutritionally, this is a nice dish because we have a good source of protein from the tofu. We have a moderate amount of carbohydrates from our noodles, but we're not overdoing it, so there'll be uh, about 25 to 30 grams of carbs in a serving of this. Again, we're gonna send out that nutrition label so you can take a closer look and decide how it might fit into your diet. We've got uh, several grams of fiber between the bok choy and the mushroom, and those are contributing some good vitamins and minerals as well. So overall, a really nice blend of things and a nice blend of flavors as well. Again, if you are not a fan of mushrooms, swapping that out for the broccoli is a great choice. You'll cook it about the same amount of time, uh, and you'll just have some different flavors there at the end. Um, with the other ingredients here, we talked about some substitutions. If you wanted to do just a regular pasta instead of the noodles, you absolutely could. Uh, but if it's a full length pasta, like an eight to 10 minute cook time, go ahead and do that in a separate pot so that you don't overcook the rest of things. So we've got probably about 60 more seconds here. You'll know when it's done by the noodles that you put in. You want those noodles to be fully cooked. They shouldn't be rigid or hard. Um, they should have that nice soft tenderness to them. In terms of storing this dish, you can store it in the refrigerator in an airtight container for about three to four days. Uh, so you've got plenty of leftovers you can get out of that. And then when you choose to eat it, you definitely wanna serve it hot. It tastes much better warm. Um, I did try the previous batch I made cold, just out of curiosity, didn't do much for me. So I would recommend warming it up either if you have a small saucepan on the stove top or just for convenience sake, you can just heat it up in the microwave. And again, it makes about six servings. So you can get quite a few meals out of this. In terms of calories though, it is lower than what we normally make. Typically we aim for a meal's worth of calories. So about four to 500 calories. Since this comes in at about 250, you might think of some things that you could pair with it uh, to make it a little more filling. Certainly having something sweet on the side, like a side of fruit to kind of add some more flavor to it could be fun. Um, you might think of some other options, maybe doing some extra vegetables on the side if you wanted to do like a side salad, lots of different things. You could also contribute to this by adding some other protein. We use tofu today, but certainly you could work in some animal protein sources in here if you wanted to, to kind of make the recipe your own. So it's been about three minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat off on this, open it up. And again, the best way to make sure it's done is to check the tenderness of the noodles. Um, and I can see that they are exactly where I need them to be. They're loose. Uh, they're not going to be super dry anymore. So those look perfect. So let's, let me grab a bowl here and just plate a small amount of it for you, show you what it looks like. Try to show you that without all the steam blocking the camera. So you can see those noodles in there. We've got that nice green coming from the bok choy, the tofu and the mushrooms are split up in there nicely. I know I talk a lot about color whenever I cook and how I'll try to make things look appetizing with splashes of additional color. So something you could do to try to add more color to this, because right now it is kind of mostly brown with some pops of green. 
thinking of other colors of vegetables or produce that you could add in there that might add more to it. I know we talked about broccoli in place of mushrooms, which would certainly add another vibrant pop of green to it to kind of diversify that a little bit. Uh, but if you're serving it, like I mentioned, if you wanted to pair it maybe with a piece of fruit on the side for some extra nutrition there, having a colorful piece of fruit next to this could look very nice presentation wise. Um, but this is great for meal prepping. You can have this in little containers in a soup cup, heat it up in a microwave, and then you are all set. So again, to recap, we're going to be sending out a copy of the recipe with instructions on everything, including pressing the tofu, and we'll send out that nutrition information and a copy of the recording. You'll also get a link to a short survey. So if you've got ideas for future demonstrations, feedback from me, love to hear it. It really helps us grow as a department uh, and be able to offer better events for you. So I'm going to turn my attention over here and just double check to see if we've got any questions, uh, anything like that in the Q&A that I can address. Check here. All right. It actually doesn't look like we've got any questions or comments today. So we can just wrap up here. I will just say thank you everyone so much for attending. I do want to let you know that we've got a lot of other great events going on. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a guided meditation and yoga session from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. That's hosted by uh, our instructor, Janet Weiss. She is awesome, really nice, relaxing way to end your week. So I encourage you all to check that out. Uh, if you're not already on our mailing list, you can email us at edws at gsu.edu. We'll get you on there so you can stay up to date on all of our stretch breaks, our Fun Fitness Fridays, uh, Stack and Cheer support group, cooking demo, meditation. We've got all sorts of great stuff going on. So send us an email again, edws at gsu.edu, and we'll get you on that mailing list. All right. Making sure I don't have any questions. I see a couple of people saying thank you. Appreciate you again. Thank you for attending and I hope you have a great rest of your day.